this video we're going to build on <coughs> work. So we said previously that work is the sum of the distances over which a force is applied, or you can more simply write work is force over distance. Um, these two equations, um, for our purposes, mean the same thing. We can we started to look at work because work shares the units, uh, same units as energy, and ultimately we're interested in energy. Uh, one thing about energy, we know similar to mass, energy can neither be created nor destroyed. So just like we can't create or destroy mass, we have conservation of mass, we can't create or destroy energy, but rather it can be reconverted to different forms of energy. Converted to other forms. So conservation of energy. What we're specifically interested in in our course is thermochemistry or thermal energy. So we're going to look at the first law of thermodynamics. Now the first law of thermodynamics says that the change in internal energy of, a, of, a, of any system is equal to Q plus W. So W is the W we saw up here. This is work. Q is heat. Delta means change, and U is internal energy. So this is change in internal energy. So a change in internal energy is equal to the sum of heat and work. One thing to notice is that U is a capital letter, and Q and W are lowercase letters. That's something to, to notice for now. This equation is linked to this sentiment here, where this total change in internal energy is the sum of heat and work. What's the difference between heat and work? Well, uh, work involves organized molecular motion. The key thing is here, organized. Where heat is more chaotic. Chaotic molecular motion. So for example, if I were to allow heat to be produced. I could use that heat to cook my food. Um, but there's a, a non there's a non-uniform, a more chaotic release of energy that I could then absorb with my food and use that energy to cook my food. I could take a system and allow it to do work. Work is more organized. So for example I could allow the expansion of a gas to work to push a piston in a certain chamber and convert that to the forward motion of a vehicle, for example. Um, so uh, in this video, at least for now, because we've run out of some space, we'll say that work is more um, organized than, than heat is. <coughs> So let's erase this and try and come up with a visual that would cement this idea.
So if I have a metal bar and another metal bar, so let's say this is a metal bar, and it's versus, so metal bar versus metal bar, one of these metal bars is going to do, they're going to release heat, one of these metal bars is going to do work. So for the benefit of the diagram, let's see this one is going to release heat. Whatever that means, it doesn't really matter, but the sentiment is what matters for now. So how we release heat, we'll delay that for another video, but release heat somehow. This metal bar is going to release work. So by some mechanism, we release heat and we release work. Now, let's say to monitor the release of this stuff, we have gas atoms right above here. So these gas atoms are going to respond to this work. This work is going to be done on these gas atoms. If I were to do work on the gas atoms, I would have uniform motion. Or maybe rather than a gas atom, maybe this is, these are atoms in another bar. Maybe this is a piston. So maybe we take another metal bar. And if I do work on this metal bar, so if this metal bar somehow does work here, the representative atoms in this metal bar, there's a uniform motion, and in this example it's up. So there's a uniform motion of molecules. If I were to take atoms here, there would be more of a chaotic motion of molecules. So it's much harder to see what's happening here. There's no much more chaotic, much less uniform. How does the internal energy choose whether to convert itself to heat or work? So importantly, delta U does not choose Q or W. The energy has no stake whether it is converted to heat or work. So how do we pick one or the other? The answer is that there's no difference between types of energy, heat, work, or other types of energy. The reason why some energy will manifest as heat versus work is due to the way a scientist enables the manifestation of energy. So for example, if I allow work to happen, if I have a piston and let's say this is a gas, I set up the conditions, set the stage so that work can be done on a piston and uniform motion of the piston can, be, can occur. I've set the stage for work so I will get what I enable. If I enable work to happen, potentially I can see work. If I don't have a piston, I won't see work. Let's say instead I have, um, let's say these are ice cubes floating in a beaker of water and I allow the ice to absorb energy. Well, this could manifest as heat energy, which would lead to the melting of the ice. So we know that when ice melts, it's because of um, heat energy, a change in heat energy. Why doesn't the ice do work? I didn't allow it to do work. So the scientist can dictate through her or his experiment, the setup of their experiment, whether delta U is converted to Q or W. 